So I want to talk a little bit more about these receptors that I've mentioned are important for one cell to communicate to another um, other than the gap junctions, which doesn't use receptors. In neural signaling, so synaptic communication, paracrine, autocrine, and endocrine, these all require membrane receptors, which you've learned about already is a type of membrane protein that span the membrane. So there are two types of membrane proteins, and these both exist in all of those different types of um, communication. So we'll see these three types, sorry, two types um, in more detail, especially when we get to the nervous system. The first type, you maybe can tell from what this looks like. This is a, a ligand gated ion channel. This is also called a chemically gated. Why? Because a ligand is a chemical. A ligand is a chemical messenger that binds to a receptor. So this ligand, this is a chemical messenger. Could be a neurotransmitter if we're talking about a synapse. It could be a hormone. If we're talking about something that travels in the bloodstream, it could be a paracrine molecule if we're talking about local. So the ligand is going to bind to an ion channel in the membrane and cause it to open. This is one mechanism for opening ion channels. Um, a ligand gated ion channel. There are two other types um, as well as leak channels as well. So there's some channels are just always open. This specific type is opened via the binding of a chemical messenger, changes the conformation of this protein slightly, causing it to open and ions can then flow down their electrochemical gradients. So down their Concentration gradients, electrical charge is also going to be important. That's why they're flowing in. So we'll see examples of, of these channels. There's ones that are specific to potassium, ones that are specific to sodium. There's ones that are a little bit less specific, et cetera. Okay, membrane receptor type two is a G protein coupled receptor. This is a type of signaling that is less direct. So this is a, I don't think I have this as key terms for this week, but we'll see them later. This is going to be indirect, meaning when this neurotransmitter or hormone, could be either one in two different contexts, right? Binds to the protein receptor, it causes stuff inside the cell to be activated. This membrane receptor, the G protein coupled receptor is not an ion channel itself. It's gonna cause effects, indirect effects. Um, this here's the G protein. So this is a way of signal transduction, taking the signal from outside of the cell and bringing it into the cell. I do have a more detailed picture of this. And again, we'll see it. Um, We'll see it more, especially when we get to um, autonomic nervous system and such. So idea here is we've got a first messenger that is this guy right here. That might be something like epinephrine. Epinephrine is adrenaline um, released from the adrenal gland and travels throughout the body to act as a hormone. It's going to bind to a receptor in the cell membrane, wherever there's receptors in the body, because this is traveling through the bloodstream. So this membrane receptor is activated, is, is changed. Epinephrine is the first messenger. However, in this case, epinephrine can't get into the cell. Um, it's going to instead bind to this receptor. This G protein, so step two, Step one is the first messenger binds. To that receptor, step two is G protein is activated. Activated, look, it's going over there. 
It's actually released from the receptor, from the G protein coupled receptor, and it's going to bind another protein. It's going to bind adenylate cyclase, which is a enzyme that converts ATP to phosphate groups and CAMP. Um, so we got G protein activates adenylate cyclase. Great. This is what creates a second messenger, produces this. This is also called second messenger signaling because you have a second messenger. CAMP is the messenger inside the cell that's going to transduce the signal because epinephrine can't enter. Um, so CAMP is gonna do stuff inside the cell. For example, it's going to activate kinases. So I have this here, um, CAMP activates kinase. What's a kinase? A kinase is a protein that adds phosphate groups to other proteins. Here's a little schematic of this. I, you don't need to know the detail, but it can help to see a visual. Here is a protein. Kinase is an enzyme that uses ATP to put a phosphate group on a protein. This changes the function of this protein. So change protein function. That's kind of all what signaling is, is changing protein function so protein can do something else. And that's what metabolism and stuff is. So activated kinases are going to activate um, a whole bunch of other stuff. Kinases, we've activated this. Kinases can now activate a whole bunch of other things. Right, so that's what's happening here is kinase activates other proteins such as enzymes, right? Now that those enzymes are activated, they can carry out various metabolic effects, um, changes in gene expression, changes in actual metabolism, glucose um, levels or in, in breakdown, ATP production, various things the cell needs to do. So we'll see different examples of, of these effects. But the CAMP is considered the second messenger that transduces this to the inside of the cell. Okay, that's a basic introduction to G protein coupled receptors, which use second messenger signals. Learning check. <laughs>